Welcome to the Windows Computer and Technology channel, and this is a questions and answer for uh, questions that I've got that have to do with the future of Windows, with what I think or what we know about what's upcoming in the next you know, year and the next few years, too. One of the first ones that I see quite often, a lot of people uh, saying, oh, well, you know, Microsoft is already working on Windows 12. They're not. No indication of Windows 12 for now. Um, that's not to say that it won't happen. It just means that for now, they're focusing on working on Windows 11 and improving Windows 11 the best way they can. So don't um, you know think they're talking they're working on Windows 12. It's not a thing. I've seen a lot of uh, you know fake news on the because uh, you got to be careful. There are two types of videos on YouTube that talk about you know the Windows uh, 12. A lot of them are fake news, but also a lot of them are what we call concept videos that are these are kind of interesting because they are. Um, users kind of creating what they would feel like would be a great Windows operating system. Um, so you, you got to be very careful. But none of them are actually showing any Windows 12 real pictures or sc screenshots. Uh, it's not a thing for now. Um, some of you have been asking if, um, you know, a lot of, of course, the future, the, the features, the drag and drop, and a lot of things happening within Windows 11 that were in Windows 10 and so on, if, you know, all of that is uh, actually being worked on by Microsoft. And indeed it is. Uh, Microsoft seems to be on the right track right now for doing a lot of work on Windows 11. We're starting to see it in the dev channel builds, uh, like 22563, where they are working on creating this um, new Windows 11 environment where, yes, you will have a lot more uh, personalization options that are missing with Windows 11, but that exist in Windows 10. Uh, this is why, you know, I don't necessarily recommend people going to Windows 11 unless they just, you know, if you want to go to the Windows 11 because you feel like I want to have it, I fine. But if you're not, you know, if you're using Windows 10 and you're, you're okay with Windows 10, just stay there. It's not a problem at all. Um, one question, which is kind of difficult to really know um, totally, is how many computers out there can run Windows uh, 11 and that are supported? So um, that question is tough to uh, check. I've been looking at a lot of statistics of Windows 11 and tried to see you know how many computers that was the percentage of computers out there that would be uh, windows 11 compatible and from estimates from a few websites that really are estimates um, and looking at the average age of the pcs out there uh, the estimate that they gave was that roughly of the existing pcs um, Roughly 45 to 50 percent are capable of running Windows 11 in supported mode. That would mean half of the PCs out there are already capable of running Windows 11 correctly, but the other half are unsupported. That means they're old, too old for uh, Windows 11 and supported mode. Other questions I get, of course, is, you know, we talked about how Microsoft is going to put a little watermark on the bottom. And by the way, very important because people have, um, you know, don't understand what I just said in the watermark. So this watermark, which is the one for the Windows Insider Dev channel, is there. It's going to stay there. You're not removing this. This is a watermark because you're running or I'm running right now a dev channel version. And for some reason, some people say, well, just activate it and it's going to, it is activated. You don't understand. This is not a stable version. This is a test version. It is fully activated. It's not because it's not activated. It's every 
version of Windows 11 that is a test version has a watermark. Um, what I talked about was the fact that up here above the evaluation copy and build number, there's a phrase that says you're uh, running on unsupported hardware. The trick that I showed in the video on how to remove it removes this only. So when people, uh, I had a lot of people say, well, you know, I go there and the key doesn't exist. The key doesn't exist because you don't have the watermark. You have the watermark for the dev channel, not for unsupported. When the unsupported watermark appears on your screen, that's where that registry key exists. Um, a lot of people are wondering about Windows updates. Are they really more efficient in Windows 11? Yes, they are. Absolutely. Other question is, you know, is gaming a problem? Is, um, you know, is it as fast? I game on my main laptop with Windows 11 on it. I have no problems. It works great. Uh, moving the taskbar. Look, we think it's going to happen at some point, but uh, for now, it's not in any test builds, so we're not, they're not there yet. But I wouldn't be surprised that at some point they'll have that up and running where you can move your taskbar around the screen like you did before. Absolutely no problem. As for, of course, like we mentioned at the beginning, Windows 12, it's not a thing. There's no such thing as Windows 12 for now. Uh, do I think Windows 12 will be a thing? I wouldn't be surprised Windows 12 will be a thing at some point. But, you know, we just got Windows 11. <clears throat> this is the start of Windows 11. We're still too early in the development. A lot of questions about uh, how long is Windows 11 supported? <clears throat> well, we don't really have an answer to that. Microsoft doesn't give any dates or any time frame of when Windows 11 would expire in time. Uh, we know that, like Windows 10, each version seems to be 24 months. Windows 10 has 18 months cycle. Windows 11 has 24 months cycle for each version. That means that when you get a version of Windows 11 uh, and you want to know what's the cycle, well, that version that you're getting is 24 months. So that means the one we're running right now, so this is the dev channel, but the one we're running right now for the Bill 22000, that has 24 months from the release date. What we know is that this fall, when there's a big update, that will that update, if you install it, will give you another 24 months. It's like Windows 10. It's like a cycle that restarts every time you update to the latest version and goes to a certain point. So it's like Windows 10. A lot of people are saying, well, if it's 18 months, how come... Isn't it, you know, 2025, the uh, cutoff date? Yes, but you'll be going there by 18 month cycles uh, with updates for Windows 10. Um, for the other future things about Windows 11 and, and the future of PCs, um, of course, one of the questions that I get asked from time to time is, do you think there is a future without Windows at some point in time? We can't see it right now because obviously Windows is dominant and obviously with all the new PCs being sold with Windows right now, it shows that Windows still has its dominance and its importance. Would that be possible in a future? It, it is totally possible that in some future there could be no Windows. And what that means, because of course a lot of people think, oh, well, it's going to be Linux and it's not. It's going to be Mac. It's not. If people start moving away from Windows, they're going to move away to, and we see it already. What we have seen is those that are not on the PC world anymore. They are on other things. And what is the dominant platform right now is actually, Apple is actually a big winner there, and it's the uh, iPads. iPads are... Um, the number one thing people are looking at when they look at what is life beyond a PC. And the Apple iPads have been the most popular tablets. 
Android tablets are there. They are popular to some extent, but there's something that makes an iPad more appealing for a lot of people. One of them is probably because iPads just work real well out of the box. And, and you know, it's not like Android where it's there is a weird, um, you know, depending on who you buy it from, the manufacturer, it's all, um, it's, it's, you know, configured differently from major companies to another company. So if you move on to one Android version or, or you know, manufacturer like Samsung to an LG tablet or whatever, you have different environments. Even though it's Android, it's not the same. iPads are consistent and that is helping them gain market share a lot. Um, for those asking me, you know, what's the future of Linux? The future of Linux is going to be for the Linux fans enthusiasts. It's going to stay there and pretty much stay there like as it is. You know, I get a lot of people um, commenting, well, you know, you should know that uh, uh, Chrome OS or Chromebooks are, you know, Linux based. Uh, yeah, but it's not Linux. You don't understand what I mean when I say that. It is totally different environment and it is made to be a different type of machine. When I talk about Linux, I talk about the distros that are PC-based installed distros. I don't care how small they can be or how big they can be. They're not where anyone will ever go, and they are um, complicated for everybody. Thinking Linux is easy to use is not is, is, is the fantasy of Linux users that know what to do. There is no distro of Linux that's easy is easy to use to do stuff. It, it is untrue. And I've used a lot of distros. And I can tell you that apart from the basics, once you want to do a little things more advanced, you got to learn, you know, command lines. You got to learn things that no one wants to learn and that you don't want to do and that people don't understand. So that's why Linux is not an option and never will be. And it also has the other uh, side of it. Linux, giant like Android, is plagued with the fact that there are millions of distros, all different. So that isn't helping. Linux would help if it would be whatever you have, just one thing that always is the same. Maybe we'd, maybe we'd have some people move on to. But if you have Linux Mint, you have to stay on Linux Mint, or if you go to Ubuntu, then everybody's lost. It doesn't help. And the fact that Linux also doesn't get any momentum is because business runs with Windows, and a lot of people just follow what's running with Windows. And the apps, and there's a lot of things that you don't have on Linux that Windows only can run, or in some cases Mac and Windows, but a lot of software is Windows only. There's a lot of things preventing Linux from really reaching anything. And there is no move to, you know, when I see the uh, the posts here on the channel of, well, you know, it made me move to Linux. No, you were already on Linux. Stop lying and saying things like that. It's untrue that people are moving to Linux because of Windows 11 or Windows 10 or this or that. We don't see that move. The market share of the operating systems don't change. Linux stays pretty much the same. And it's a small, small percentage. Like Mac, Mac um, market share hasn't moved in 10 years. It's pretty much the same people. So Linux users stay on Linux. Mac users stay pretty much on Mac. But Windows users pretty much stay on Windows. There's no big move. And a lot of it has, be has, has to do with, you know, people are easily lost even within Windows. So imagine going to something else that works differently. But like I said, the future could be based on things like an iPad, for example, and they have an advantage there. And the future will be non-PC at some point. That's for sure. Uh, you know, laptops and, and, and desktop PCs will probably stay for the enthusiasts much more than a regular, you know, everyday people using computing technologies. Uh, we also see it with the young generation coming with their technology. A lot of them are on their phones, don't even see the need to have anything else. 
shows you that the PC world, the fact you have to own a computer, isn't um, like it was 30 years ago, 40 years ago, when, you know, okay, we need a computer to do stuff. Well, now they are still computers, but they're not called computers. They have smartphones and tablets that can do that job. And even though they are computers, um, they are different and don't feel like using a PC or, you know, some cumbersome desktop and so on. If you enjoy my videos, please subscribe, give us thumbs up. Thank you for watching.